flat ground installation ballasted basis. We go outside in the flat ground, we lay concrete bars and we, we lay structure rows after rows after rows. Because there is a micro topography on that ground, there are ways to micro local horizontal adjustment. We can do fine adjustment with the, uh, some spacers. And later on in the seminar, we will talk about these spacers. They're variable spacers. This micro topography of the outside ground, it's not 100% flat. These micro adjustments provide a situation where the entire row of panels will be one line. There will not be forces, physical stresses. The problem becomes, becomes bigger and bigger as the line gets longer. There are forces in different directions because the ground is not flat. So there are ways to adjust it in different places. When we'll, de when we'll go through the engineering aspects of that mat matter, Later in the seminar, we will understand how to design these micro local horizontal adjustments. Another type of flat ground installation, concrete bases underground in the form of cubes and concrete post that comes up. And on these concrete posts, the met metallic structure lays down. Something very interesting about this particular technique. It allows air to flow from underneath. Not only sideways in that tunnel, solving the heat pocket, which is underneath the array, but also wind that coming from the bottom. So, Underneath this array, there, are, there is a turbulence. There are winds going from each direction. It's random. But at least we solve the problem of providing wind in other direction, so the speed of wind will be higher. If the speed of wind is higher, that means better, better ventilation. So it's very wise technique to bring that entire array up few tens of centimeters in order to allow air flowing underneath. Very interesting technique for large PV farms. Let's look at the picture on the right. It's modularic, so it's short time installation. Again, there is underground concrete cubes as basis to hold the system down together. Simple angle variations. We can use these micro adjustments to change the slope of the entire structure. The material is from a non-rusted, is non-rusted type. That structure is going to be out there for 30 years. The distance between the rows and the distance between the columns should match, and they are engineered to match, panel sizes or several panel, panel sizes. Let's say two, width of, two panel widths or three panel widths, but they are multiplication off. If we design the system properly, laying the panels and holding them is a very, very easy a task and very strong mechanically. This is an example of mount technique, technique structure which is not preferred in general. Some cases yes, but in general no. There is a risk of vibration. Notice in this picture the two posts, one on the left and one on the right. The one on the right we cannot see because the panels uh, coming in front. 
But we understand that there are two main posts. And on these posts, there is a structure and the panels are on the structure. That means that there is a sail that can vibrate. This is why that particular array is right next to a wall. This wall blocks winds coming from the back. And this wall creates another thing. It limits the heat pocket and allows air flowing through a tunnel. It's a very well-defined tunnel. Once I define a tunnel, I basically define the wind speed that goes underneath. So it's more or less fixed air pressure under the tunnel, in the tunnel, under the panels. So winds coming from the front, no wind coming from the back, more or less, plus minus, fixed wind flowing through the tunnel, under the panels, creating more or less fixed difference between the air pressure on top and the air pressure in the back of the panels. Some what provide a semi-solution to vibrations. But in general, it's very hard to overcome vibrations when it comes to a structure like this. So a structure like this can be very applicable to areas that have no winds or low level of winds. In a windy area, we will not do that. Underground concrete bases, and this is a technique, how we can do it. We drill a hole, we pour concrete into the hole in the ground, and the distances between one hole and another, it's basically a multiplication of panel widths, like we said before. On the right picture, we see a PV farm. On the left picture, we see how, how we build it, how we space the post one next to each other. Measurement is multiplication of panel widths. The reason is there is because there will be another plane of frames with one as opposed to long one. And what I would like to do is to have a panel sitting on this with running frame. So the panel we have a will have a support. Not only support long-wise, but also support width-wise. So I have to make sure that the space, the distance between one post and another will be in the multiplication of panel width. We will not run posts like this per panel. If a panel width is one meter, these posts will not be one meter, they will be three meters. So one every three panel is being supported by a frame underneath. Just to continue another as with another aspects of uh, gr flat ground installation. Stainless steel structure, also not only for mechanical strength, but because it's 30 years outside, and long distance between rows. Look at the picture on the right. Look at the space between the front row and the back row, and the shadow that the front row does. We have to make sure that shadow will not go and hit the back row. If it will do it, it will destroy, reduce dramatically the output power of the back row. The front row will get what it gets. The back row will get portion, very, very low level of output power. So there's a space between the rows. 